Welcome back to Autism, The New Perspective, the podcast show where we help you understand what is going on in the mind of your child, and we encourage you that growth for your child is possible. I'm Kat Lee, and in this week's podcast, RDI consultant Lisa Pulaski joins us and talks with me about the three E's of parent empowerment. Let's listen in. I love visiting with Lisa because we are, uh, I, I want to say, Lisa, we're always on the same page. So it's always really fun chatting with you, but we're both parents. Our children are grown, but we went through the RDI program with our children. Tell us your personal story about why parent empowerment is so important to you. My personal story. Okay. That's, that's um, a really interesting thing. So early days, I was uh, an ABA parent managing a team of six. I remember one particular snowy day, one of my therapists left my home. And as I waved goodbye to her, I said a little prayer for her safe return, her safe uh, drive home and her safe return, because I felt that she was my lifeline to my child's future. And I felt very, very uncomfortable with that at the same time. It was an incredibly scary place to be, to feel like there was some other person that I was paying who would be the only source of help for my child. Because up until that time, as parents, I think many of us were led to believe that we're not enough and that other people, the, the you know, the experts, if you will, or the therapists were better suited to raising our kids or parenting our children. And, and so that's my personal story. And when I found RDI, I, I mean, there was no turning back. I just felt like it made such good sense. I got to be a parent, a mindful parent, but it helped to uh, really empower me to feel confident to step into the journey ahead of me. So that's a, just one story. I have many, <laughs> but that's I know one you do. story. <laughs> yeah. we, can, we can visit a lot longer than 20 minutes about that one, right? Yeah. 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 I, well, you know, I know I've told you, but my my story is that we had been in behavior analytic work with our son since he was two and at the time I came to RDI I think I first heard about RDI when he was 11 and there just wasn't anything for training us we kind of had to just I don't know how to say it really but we just had to kind of push our way into the training of the people that we hired to work with our child who Back in those days, there were no clinics, there were no trained folks, we hired people and got them trained. But there wasn't, there wasn't an empowering parent training program. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I learned about RDI and I went to uh, Dr. Gutstein's presentations, I was so blown away by the parent training and education and the whole plan for guiding parents and supervising them and helping them uh, become empowered because we had not had that. Uh, I felt I, I just, it, it was the big draw for me um, in terms of what I, I wanted to do for our family and what I wanted to do for other families, Lisa. So I felt like it was important that since we're visiting with all of you about this topic that Lisa and I uh, tell you our hearts where we are coming from, because uh, we feel so passionately about empowering families. Uh, so we have for you the three E's of empowerment. Empowerment through the guiding relationship, empowerment through engaging with your child, and empowerment through video. And we're going to talk about each of these as we visit with you and why we think they're important. And Lisa, I want to start with uh, the empowerment through the guiding relationship. So these are elements of empowerment that we have as parents. Why do you think, this is such a deep question, Lisa, but why do you think the guiding relationship seems to kind of, I don't know if I'm going to say it falls apart or doesn't develop uh, when our children are vulnerable? 
uh, well, the feedback is yeah. not reliable. So it's hard for parents to begin to understand how to guide their children. And so with through RDI, they learn how to provide those personalized productive supports through a very um, you know, detailed assessment to look to see what it is specifically that the child needs and what their developmental readiness is. So it's not this cookie cutter approach, but once those things start to fall into place, then that communication, that co-regulation becomes so much more um, informative in a sense. And so it, RDI provides this framework for families so that they can really start to understand who their children are. But before that, often parents are, you know, they, they just, they want so, so much. I know I did as a parent, I desperately wanted my child to do the simplest things like respond to me when I called his name. But I, I actually was part of the problem because I, being in crisis and so desperate, I called his name all the time and he learned to tune me out because I never gave him a reason <laughs> to check in with me. I was just like, you know, can you hear me? Do you, are you responding to me? And I think the more I called his name, the less responses, responsive he became. So again, a lot of times um, the guiding relationship, just as another example, it could break down because parents might be so desperate to try to get that communication going with their children that they create like this pseudo communication, but it ends up being just a lot of question asking. And, and, and that's just puts a lot of pressure and demand on kids too, that ends up falling flat. So without really being empowered to understand how to help support human development and growth, and through relationships, and you're just looking at like skill-based development, that can undermine the guiding relationship. So even though we may have the very, very best of intentions, it, it backfires. And I think these elements that we have here, the feelings of trust, the feelings of competency with your child, the feelings of working together with your child um, and, and so forth. They're all the elements that come with that empowerment through that guiding relationship. And even yes. more, you, you learn how to set goals and you learn how to know if you're, you're meeting those goals. And, and those are process goals. They're really important to relationship. Um, and I, I love the feeling of empowerment of working with others who worked with my child. So knowing I had a voice and knowing I could feel confident in that voice. And of course, it was communicating in a healthier way with my child, which was just huge for me, Lisa. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think also just going back to that first bullet point about feelings of trust, it's often been kind of misunderstood when I've used that word with families where I've, I felt like I've had to qualify that because I've had parents say to me, I'm, I'm the only person my child trusts. It's not that they don't trust their parents. It's this feel. It's the feeling safe within the engagements. It's safety and engagement, so that you can help the child to step to that. You can you can empower them to experience their own sense of self and their agency and autonomy, and and so that's where the trust comes as they develop greater sense of resiliency. In, in the face of manageable challenges through the process of the relationship. So it's just a, a beautiful parallel process where as consultants, we can empower the parents, but the parents are empowering the children. And if I could just quickly share with you, I thought I'm just gonna look up what uh, the definition of empowerment is. And it reads, it's the degree of autonomy and self-determination in people and in communities. This enables them to represent their interests in a responsible and self-determined way, acting on their own authority. It is the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. And so when I thought about what's the opposite of that, mm. well, I'm sure there's a better answer than this, but you know, just 
if you don't have that, you're going to approach the world with anxiety and fear. And it's oh. the opposite of everything on here. <laughs> I mean, it's like everything's reversed. Yes. Uh, that's a beautiful definition. It really fits what we're talking about. I think the feelings of competency, it's interesting because again, you mentioned the parallel process and it works here too. It's a competency for you, but it's also that competency feelings for your child and both need to be present. And that is the beauty of RDI, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to admit something early in RDI. I mean, the name is Relationship Development Intervention. And, and I think that on the surface, one would think that it's really all about social engagement and developing that social competency. But it's, and that's what's my initial thought, even as a new consultant for years. But it was, it was, of course, you know, RDI is so cutting edge and continues to layer on itself. And we've learned so much from our experiences that that maybe initially we didn't even know. I don't think that we labeled growth seeking mindset, but it has turned out to be a, a, a major benefit, one, one of the most um, beneficial aspects of what it is that we do. And um, with that said, it's through the relationship that we help an individual develop a sense of self and you need both. So um, yeah, so I can, I just think that the guiding relationship helps to develop that empowerment, not only in the parent, but in the child too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and well, continuing to think about the definition you brought to us, uh, the feelings of empowerment when you're working with others who work with their child, I mean, I, I don't want to say constant, but on a regular basis, weekly, if not some weeks daily, parents are w wanting to needing to be able to work with others who are with their child, whether it be a teacher or, or a, a therapist of some other kind of OT or speech therapist, et cetera. And this whole program gives them that feeling of confidence and competency to do that and to, to not feel for less than, a, I can't think of a better way to say it, for less than, like, I don't know anything. You do know, you do know. Mm -hmm. That's what our program will show you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it kind of is nice, it dovetails nicely, I think, into the empowerment that comes to engaging with your child, Lisa. Um, this idea of spending time uh, and of actually having active engagements with your child. Uh, why do you think that empowers us so much? Well, through the mindful guiding process, the beautiful thing is, is we're looking at quality time, not quantity time. And by being present in the moment and understanding clearly what our goals are, we're able to seize everyday opportunities and optimize them in such a beautiful, meaningful way, that's the, that's the piece that really sticks for our kids too. It's vastly different than trying to teach a child with flashcards in a boring rote way, right? It's those meaningful experiences. I mean, some of the funnest times that I've had is those playful moments where I think some of the things that I did as a as an RDI parent, I would have never done if I didn't have that empowerment. So mm -hmm. just quickly, when I was working on more complex things with um, more complexity with my kids, I met the grocery store with these adolescent boys. And uh, usually it was just one at a time. I have two boys that benefited from RDI. But anyway, I'd have one pushing the cart, but I'd have them have to continually kind of monitor me and check in on me because guess what? Every so often I would lob something like a pack of flour tortillas and they might be 10 feet away from me or I might lob a, um, a small, uh, I don't know, orange or something like that. But I kind of would wait for them to, you, you know, they, were, they would continually monitor me then. And then without even having to go, hey, shh, here, catch this, I would just lob it at them and I had and it was fun and I had people looking at us sometimes thinking oh look at that playful mom with her 
you know, preteen <laughs> boys. And so it just, it really, I mean, I wasn't, I, I, yes, I was creating a little bit of a spectacle, but in a very fun, playful way, it was, it was priceless. So, um, yeah, why not have fun while you're helping your children to develop some mental tools and processes that are going to serve them in the, you know, long haul. You're lobbing the flower with fast hands, right? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I never lobbed the eggs or anything like <laughs> risky, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. I am sure I couldn't have caught the flower, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted to emphasize the spending time and activities and engagements uh, for uh, parents and professionals who might be new to RDI because it really is key to that empowerment. So some of the things we're talking about, you know, are such basic principles. So one of the big questions I get asked when I talk to new families is how much time does it take? And I, I love the answer I've heard over the years from Dr. Gusty and other, it takes, it takes the time that you have because if you're going to spend that time lobbing groceries at your children or whatever the case may be, you don't want to be in a rush. You want to just have that good time. I liked what you said about just spending that time, taking that time with your sons. So it, it is really an important element uh, that you gain empowerment from. And then of course in RDI as consultants, those who've been in a while know we gain this through those activities and those engagements which as you pointed out when we first began to chat, are, are, it's so individualized for what those, those, those personal needs of the, of the child are, right, Lisa? Mm, absolutely, we wanna pull on the child's strengths and motivations and interests. And at the same time, one of the things that, that I love um, to help parents recognize is who they are as people and to maybe re-experience the things that they enjoyed learning how to do or that made them who they are, like who, you know, what was it about their life's experience that helped shape who they've become and how they might take that passion and then share that with their children. And so I think that's often a very historical thing that families do where they pass down, you know, maybe a, a, a hobby or a tradition you know, where they may teach their kids how to do something. I know that my husband taught our boys how to become excellent skiers, and I taught them how to cook and to fish and to play basketball, even though I'm the shortest person in my family, but I grew up playing basketball. So those are just some examples. I've had other families where they have started playing the piano with their children, or they've taught them how to I don't know if art was their thing that they engaged in art with them, but I, I just feel like it can be such a, a warm um, shared experience that, that may be part of their guiding relationship from when they were young and they continue to be able to, just because they may have a child with vulnerabilities or challenges, does it mean that they can't embrace some of those same things and enjoy them with their children? In fact, we encourage it. So. My funny story about this, or it's funny to me anyway, Lisa, is, is that um, you you know, as I've I've talked over the years, that we like to to go hiking and and to the lake, and and um, I decided that I wanted with the family to stand a paddleboard. So I uh, that's one of the things I guided my son with, and he he's got the the balance of a mountain goat, so he just walked right out on the board first time, didn't have any trouble with his balance. But you know, in order to guide, you have to be able to do a little bit yourself. I cannot tell you how many times I hit that water trying to learn how to balance on that paddle board. Um, I, I fell in that, that, I fell in that water so many times, but, uh, but even so, I was able to guide, guide him um, in the use of understanding how his hands work, because he struggled a little bit with the whole switching motion, which is a very unique motion that you mm -hmm. do. And um, I, I really, what you said touched me because I really cherished that time when I was continuing to be, look quite foolish falling off the board into the water, but still uh, guiding him, even though he had, by now was more skilled in one area than I was. Um, but once you have that, that empowerment of guiding, um, you grow as a person too. And I grew as a person learning something new as well. 
So I think growth activating is not just for our children, Lisa, it can also be for us. Absolutely. And, and, and there's so many things that you could have guided um, or, or helped him further appreciate, which is, hey, it's okay if you fall off, you just keep getting back on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's my lovely. god yeah if you knew me you would you know I cannot stand to fall off something into the water it's like I you know now that I can I can do it and we go out on the lake and everything it's still my main goal not to fall off so <laughs> yes <laughs> um, ironically I picked up paddle boarding with my own two boys uh the, the, over the last few years ourselves and I've been known to one one particular week I I went 14 kilometers on my paddle board oh yeah so anyway I love it too love it so anyway it's just it's great that that people don't have to think about how to help their kids um in in therapy like in therapeutic ways this can the the learning the engagement the growth can happen during fun experiences like learning how to paddleboard or learning how to fish or learning how to garden, you know, it doesn't, it's just whatever the opportunity is. Uh, and that, that leads me to empowerment through video. And some may be surprised that that's a, one of our three E's, but it's such a central part of our work. Um, I have had, as you can imagine, uh, being in RDI now 20 years, I've definitely had people over the years say, why is it so necessary to have video? My answer to that, Lisa, is because what you think happened didn't happen. Or if you think you know what happened, more happened. <laughs> so even if you're right about what happened, more happened than what you know, because you don't have eyes in the back of your head or your peripheral vision only goes so far. <laughs> and so uh, we put a lot of value on video, Lisa. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Oh, well, I think the videotaping is critical. As you said, I, I, I would say that a lot of parents are harsh um, on themselves initially. They, they may judge themselves too much and we really try to caution them. We want them to understand that we're learning through all of our experiences. It's a try and see guiding approach or trial guiding. We know that um, when I've had parents look back at their video, I would say 80 to 90% of the time they go, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I mean, we're all wired towards a negative bias and, and maybe being a little bit more judgy or harsh on ourselves. But the video can help us um, spotlight and highlight the good things. But as well, what, what I think is really the critical piece is learning through the experience. So reflecting on the video offline, because it's hard to be able to be as present and mindful in the moment, especially when you're new to RDI parenting, because there's going to be some things that you're missing because you might be a little bit too focused on, let's say the recipe, whereas, you know, we're process orientated on the, the guiding and, and but the, easily sometimes those things can kind of get in the way but as we learn our skill it becomes you know less uh consuming but regardless it's the offline reflection and the time spent there that that we learn we we actually start to own our knowledge based on the experiences that we have and when we start to put more of that that um knowledge into our, I guess, our bank, what we're able to do is become uh, more mentally agile in the online experiences in the moment with our kids. So the offline reflection allows us to be more mentally agile online when we're spending time with our kids in time. It's a process, but it doesn't occur unless the parents don't learn how to be reflective of their videos and so that's where the video is is so crucial yeah and it's it's like you said it's the the video and then learning to learn from your video learning to to review the video and it, it's the reviewing part that can be so challenging I think um and but once you 
learn to find comfort in that and and realize what you're gaining from it. Um, it's it's incredibly um, it, it just changes things. I know over the years, parents have told me going back and looking and, and, and in all fairness, just so for those who don't know, prior to autism, I was in uh, radio and TV, but mostly radio. And I had to, I listened back uh, to my work almost every day um, as a self critique. So I certainly had experience in that, but it's just a whole nother level of challenge, Lisa, when it's with your child. And I know for me, one of the things I discovered was that when I was thinking, I had thinking face <laughs> and I would look so intensely serious in the funnest of things, you know, because I was thinking so much and I really had to, I really learned through watching that video to reflect on, was my countenance reflecting what I was feeling versus what having to think so hard uh, and, and what was affecting what? That is just so valuable because we don't know how we're coming across to another person. And, uh, and, and I didn't want to be reflecting what I didn't feel. Does that make sense, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, um, so, so, so I think there's an empowerment and then there's also an empowerment that later, if you have others who will allow you, who are working with your child, you can help them review their own video. So it just kind of, it builds a nice path of empowerment, I think. Yes, absolutely. And one of my um, clients who I would say was particularly empowered and loved the process of learning, she said to me one week when we had a meeting, she said, oh, I did some videos this week, but I don't want to send them to you. And I said, oh, well, why not? And she said, because they were all good. I only like to send you the bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she said, because that's where the real learning occurs, right? She doesn't, she doesn't really need my feedback when, and, and, and good for her to be able to reflect on those and look back at them and go, you know, I've got this. And it's interesting too, because I remember a different parent, uh, you know, teaching her how to do video analysis and time codes and really knowing when she hit her goals and, and whatnot. And I can remember the first time I had this experience of reading her video feedback, watching the video and reading her video feedback again. And I thought to myself, what good are you, Lisa? You don't have anything. <laughs> this is what I thought. I thought, you know, you don't have anything to add. And then I thought, oh my gosh, actually, Lisa, you did exactly what you set out to do, which was to work myself out of a job. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, well done, you did that because she had become so confident and like, and it was cute because I took her video feedback and I just, uh, I just added to it um, rather than, you know, start a fresh sheet or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I agree. And yes, you're right on about that. <laughs> I mean, my whole feedback was just a lot of affirmation that she totally knew what, she, you know, it, it was beautiful. It was really cool. So I think that, that there is, um, we can't underrate how important the videotaping is and how empowering it can be. Well, I personally like people only to see my good video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's a, a bit egotistical of me. But and in a serious side, it is sometimes uh, a struggle. And if anyone here is a parent who struggles with this, not to just want people to see the quote unquote good stuff, but it is where you have the struggle that is where you learn the most from Lisa when it comes mm -hmm. to video. You learn mm -hmm. the most. And that get, that leads again to the empowerment of the most from being able to analyze that and move forward. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say you can't learn things from when things work because that's an experience too. We learn from positive experiences, but um, it's also good to look at those where you don't you don't quite make your goal, whatever that might be, or you think you don't. I've also had it where a parent sent me a video and said, "This isn't any good. I didn't reach the goal," and they did. And that's part of our process to help parents know when they have done that um, and it could be just one small thing happened that they didn't expect or was not pleasant and it affected their whole view of that time with their child but then when they get that feedback they'll be relieved you know mm -hmm. and, and 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 suddenly the whole countenance changes to oh 
oh, well, you're right. I, that one moment kind of colored my view of that whole time. But that's just, I think that's just being, uh, being a, a mom, a parent, a person, Lisa, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's true because when we're looking at videos, sometimes I might review a certain aspect, a moment, multiple times, several times. And with that, then I'll, I might, I had a parent one time who said to me, I don't understand why my son got so oppositional at a certain point in the video. And I watched it over and over and over. And she was, it was actually, she was pouring in flour and he had to stir. And the more flour she put in, the less competent he felt. But rather than saying, this is getting too hard for me, he took the bowl, went to the, he's just about five years old. So it was just a little thing, but he took the bowl and went to the other side of the island and he started screaming at her like, no, but she had no idea she had this. But it was just through careful observation of this video and seeing the struggle. And, and of course, then I then I collab collaborated with the mom to say, like, do you see this too? And she said, Oh, absolutely. But if we didn't have that video, we would have never been able to recognize that just that simple process was his edge plus 10, it set him over his threshold. And this is what caused the breakdown. So it's just all part of that process of becoming empowered to learn how to properly guide your child. And, you know, it is through often the use of video. So being an empowered parent, what does it mean to you? Well, Lisa, um, I love your story. I, I always love your story about your, your boys. Uh, I, love, I love what it means to your relationship today with your boys. And that was one thing I wanted to, to kind of conclude here with is it's not a temporary, it's not a temporary empowerment. <laughs> it's, it sticks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah. sticks. So just recently, and I'm not, sh not sure if this is the story that you're thinking about, but the other day we as a family got an infrared sauna and I was listening to a podcast and I came back from my walk with the dog and I was sharing just some of the little tidbits with my husband and my uh, youngest son, who's 23. And I said, oh, these are some cool things. And so they started trying to drill me. And I said, no, you, you you know, both of you, I said, you will listen to the podcast. I am not feeding you this information like little passive little baby birds. I said, you have to own your own knowledge and pick out what'll be important for you because they each have different kinds of goals with respect to using it. So, uh, but anyway, it was just kind of funny. And, it, and, and that particular story I think is, is, relevant to what we're doing in RDI too, because we want the families to own their knowledge. And this is this beautiful collaborative process that we engage in with the parents and they engage in that with their children. But what happens is, is empowerment through that process. So I think it's, it's a mindset too, in terms of, you know, just helping develop that independence and that, and that ownership of knowledge. And thank you for joining us for Autism, A New Perspective, the podcast show where we help you understand what is going on in the mind of your child. And we always encourage you that growth for your child is possible. I'm Kat Lee. See you next time.